Kids, what you just saw me put on there was adhesion promoter. I've already wiped everything down twice. I do need to change my clothes because it's the clothes I did my body work in just the last episode. Because this is the same day, but whatever. Anyways, uh, it's really warm in here. It's too warm in here, but I can't get it regulated right. But we got to paint. So if you notice, I got the bumper up on a block that's needed to get it up off the ground because if you get them. We're, like this bumper's pretty long so it was pretty close to the ground and trying to spray it you're going to spray dust up into your bumper so lifting it up like that really helps keep the dust down on that um i still need to move some stuff around i don't really like my fender right here but uh it is what it is now i wasn't originally gonna paint the whole hood but i got a spot here where i sanded through right up in the corner up there so we are going to paint the whole hood and plus it's got some chips in it it's got some black marks there they were chips it's just gonna give it a fresh look is it gonna match the fender probably not it'll be close hopefully but anyways that adhesion promoter it's good for 24 hours to spray over it so uh, and you have to leave it for half an hour it dried pretty quick because i got it too warm in here i got some bare metal spots on this fender we're gonna hit those with self-etching primer right before we go with sealer i'm doing gray sealer pretty sure i got enough here I don't have to do the whole hood with sealer. I'm just gonna coat the bodywork here, and then I'm gonna do a little bit of uh, self etching primer up here because there's some bare metal over there on the side. Just a couple places where I want the paint to stick. On plastic, you want to use an adhesion promoter. It's not really needed on anything else. So th this is primed, and you should be able to spray over. But I'm, I don't know that I sand it through in some places because it's black primer. The bumper's black. It's hard to tell if you sand it through it. Your floors, if you want to try to keep your dust down. I already did. I filled up my sprayer. I'm going to do it again. But I need to go grab some paint guns. I'm not wearing a paint suit this time. I've wore a paint suit the last couple times. And I, I feel like I'm getting hairs off of those paint suits or cheap ones. And I've already picked one cat hair off this bumper. When I sprayed the adhesion promoter on there, I found a cat hair. It's hard. It's almost impossible to not get a cat hair in something when you have four cats. It's a problem. All right, so we're going to mix up some sealer here. We're using gray. I have uh, had this for a while, so it's going to take a while to mix it up, so you're going to have to give me some time here.
All right, so I got everything coated and it's had time to dry. Body work doesn't look too bad on that. Yeah, pretty happy with that. Anyways, mixing up the color. Forget what it's called, Twilight Blue. This is re half and half. It's a reducer and paint. So it's half paint, half reducer. As you can see, I filled the whole cup up because I figure we're going to do multiple coats. I mean, I know we're going to do multiple coats, but anyway, let's get this mixed up and get this shot on the car. So I got a thick coat on. The next two, one to two coats are going to be thin coats. Um, I'm really, I'm having problems with it going on splotchy. So I'm going to mess with the gun a little bit. The fender looks pretty decent, pretty even. I, I got some splotchiness and it's some metallic, how it's coming out of my gun. So I got some splotchiness I need to work on there, especially on the hood. If you look at that so we need to make sure that the next two coats we don't get that splotchiness so i gotta really mess with my gun figure that out before i run out of paint so when you have problems with your gun search up what your problem is try to figure it out okay so i got on the youtubes and watched some actual professional painters because i'm not one and according to them, when you're spraying metallics, you want to do multiple thin coats. Well, I wanted to get good coverage, so the first one was thick. That's fine. So we're going to do two thin coats. The guy said to open your fan pattern the whole way and spray on a relatively low air pressure, like 16 to 20 PSI. That makes sense, because I've been spraying around 30, and I haven't had my fan open the whole way, so it hasn't been as consistent. They say... With the wide fan pattern, it makes it more consistent. So I'm hoping this works. So let's try it out on this coat. So what I told you right there was 100% correct. That, is, that worked phenomenal. 
In fact, that's how I'll always spray my metallics from now on. That worked out way better than I expected to. I was thinking maybe it was my gun, you know, getting in my head, thinking, I, I don't know, maybe I'm doing it wrong, something. But yeah, that really evened it out. There's no more splotchiness. It, it looks good. That, that, and I turned my lights on because I didn't even think about that. But the bumper, everything is looking fantastic now. So one more mist coat like that, and then um, we'll switch into clear coat. Now I also have problems with clear coat, especially on hoods. Um, it's really hard to get enough clear on there without having dry spray. So we're going to try our best. Hopefully, it turns out pretty good. Got the clear mixed up, ready to shoot. It's warm in here. The furnace is still running, but it's going to kick off here in a minute. And uh, everything's looking good, uniform. I think I'm going to start on the hood so I know I have enough paint to continue on. Because I don't, I like to fill this up more than I did, so I didn't really do that. But look at the, look at the color, look at the evenness. That guy was spot on that I watched on YouTube. I'll have to look his channel up again. But he does know what he's doing. Because that was perfect. So, alright, game time. It's time for the last and final coat. I'm going full commando. I'm putting my light on. Yeah, you can't even see me. So, 
everything is turning out fantastic. I mean, it's looking really good. So, party on. Party on. Guys, I am pretty dang proud of this paint job. As of right now, I don't see any runs, but that's not to say that there isn't any that I'm not seeing. So, tomorrow we'll come back and we'll see how everything turned out. We'll get a better look at everything when the fumes are down. But man, I, I'm thrilled with how this paint job turned out. The metallic trick that I love that it, it works so good it works so good and just look at the finish on that and I did have some problems with my gun there turned out my I somehow turned my air nozzle on the gun down and it was spitting like just clear and barely any air and I sprayed the whole bumper and the whole fender like that and then I got to the hood and I'm like there's something wrong with this and that's what it was, my air. I, I must have turned it at some point and then almost shut the air supply off to the gun. But, I mean, for having the gun messed up, I mean, looks pretty dang good. All right, I'll see you tomorrow when I can breathe in here. I'm not even lying to you guys when I say this is probably one of the best paint jobs I've done. I think my Z was pretty good, but this one is right on par with that. Now that I got the metallics down, I that built a lot of confidence, and all it was was gun settings, and that's why I couldn't get it right before. I'm going to go ahead and unmask everything. We still have a lot to do today. Uh, I got to put the tire pressure sensors in the wheels. I got new lugs for the wheels. I got oil to change the oil. I also got to wire the fog lights in. I'm going to try to get that all done in this episode because I don't think the painting was enough. So I'm going to try to fit it all in. Your mom in this video. I'm painting in a garage, so yes, there is dirt in the paint. You're going to see that. And my hoods, I am still haven't, like I get a really good finish on the bumpers and, and the fenders and stuff on a hood, a big surface like the hood. I still have a problems where it's kind of orange peeled, but not really. As you can see, I, I mean, it's it's pretty good, honestly. This one turned out better than most of the ones I've done. And I don't know if it's just because I'm, I'm painting it laying down, where maybe if I had it tilted up, it would spray better. I, I don't know. But, I mean, you know what? I'm not mad. I'm not mad at it at all. Anyways, we're going to see how far off this is once I get the plastic off, because I d did paint this whole hood and I wasn't going to but we burnt through up here in the corner and I just I didn't want to have that underneath you would have seen that and then there was chips in it there was like little dots and stuff so we got that now I have one problem in one area and I can still see it it looked like there was a hair in it and it was during the first color coat I could see a hair and I can still see it where's it at right there 
and I, I took a pick and tried to pick it, and I could not get a hair off of that. But it's still, I, I don't know. I gave up. I picked at it for a while, smudged the paint around, so it doesn't, you know what I mean? There, there's a mark there. But, I mean, besides that, though, I, I, I would be thrilled with this paint job on all of my cars after this if this is how they would turn out. Let's get this thing demasked. I have no demasking to do on the bumper. And I'm not going to... I'm going to leave this stuff because it just I just painted it yesterday. So the paint's still soft. Yes, I can touch it and stuff. But I don't want to go throw in the grills on now. I could probably do the bottom one because it clips in from the back. But the front one goes on from the front and with the paint still being soft that grills a little tight in there it might end up messing the paint up so i'm just going to leave this for this week i'm going to do full assembly next weekend it'll be the next video and that'll be the final video of this but i want to i'm going to let it you know marinade set is what i'm going to do so all right let's get to demasking Dude, they, they nailed that color match. I mean, it may be one shade off, if if even that. That's like, it's really, really good. That's amazing how close that is. Now, if you've seen, I had to, I took the pinstripe off. He wants me to do the whole thing, and I probably will, but it's going to take me some time to do that. If you've seen what I was using, you can use one of these. Take off decals or adhesives and stuff. You have to be really careful with one of these because you can also burn through your clear coat. So, like, don't run it at a high speed. Put it on a low speed. I actually had it on a high speed, but I was only using half trigger. That's a, that's on, so that's slow speed. That's even too fast. You want to run it like, like that. And that's all the faster you want to run it. Because it will. It, it'll get hot because it's like a rubber compound or whatever. It'll, it'll get hot real quick, and it'll just melt your clear coat off. So do not... Sit in one place for too long. Don't push on it. Just easily run across it, and and it'll just melt off there. And these pinstripes are old as well. So, uh, oh, that was another thing on the old fender, the pinstripe. That's where they uh, color blended because this fender had been painted before. Um, so if you see right there, there's a there's a lip on it, and that's because they just taped it right at that pinstripe to uh to paint the lower section so it would still match the hood yeah so that that's a, that's a trick that some painters do but we're taking these pinstripes off yeah that 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 looks awesome that's that's really good All right, so next I want to take all the wheels off. I haven't balanced them yet, so I need to put the new valve stems in them that will accept the tire pressure sensors. And then we'll get them balanced and I'll throw them back on there with the new lug nuts. Right now they're just holding it on with three of the originals. They're uh, not nice looking lug nuts. So I did get chrome capped ones. These aren't capped. These are just regular like nut style acorn nuts whatever you want to call them your mom knows her nuts ask her there you go right there like that
Now take what you just seen there times four. Now we're done. Okay. So uh, you can see the new lugs, they look a lot better than the old ones. And they come out like flush. I didn't plan that. That just happened. But yeah, they look really, really nice on there. Anyways, I got the fog light wiring out. And I think so that he can have fog lights on whenever he wants. We're, I'm just going to wire them into power. But I got... All of these, I gotta figure out which one's gonna fit in this fuse box. This plugs into a normal fuse location. Has a you use the fuse from the fuse box that is in that location, and then add your fuse that's gonna run to the accessory that you're putting in. Now, there's a fuse box on the inside, and then there's a fuse box on the outside of the car. Uh, the easiest way to do it would be to do the fuse box on the inside of the car because the way these are wired, you run one wire straight to power, one run one to a ground, and then inside the car you run one to a ground and one to a power. And the one that goes to power is supposed to be your ignition on. So I don't like the way... I wish they would have did this a little different, but I'll show you the wiring harness for these fog lights. I think what I'm going to... Well, I threw the switch in the car. No, that's not going to help me out. i got to get that switch out. I'm going to get my battery pack out and then wire these in and, and see how they work out. There's one fog light wire. Here's the other one. Why you would run the switch off of one and the relays off another off the other side it, that's beyond me like why wouldn't you put that all on one side so the way i gotta do it is i gotta i'm gonna put that one over there then run the the relays and the extended harness back across the car over to here where the battery is and then i also need to run that other wire into the driver's compartment through the firewall so it's over here and then there's a switch that fits in the dash but yeah, like, why why do you put this on one side and then the switch on the other side? Like, either way, I got to run one of these the whole way back across the car. <laughs> but that's that's the way it is. So anyways, so I'm going to get um, a jumper pack out and then try this and make sure that it's going to work.
Okay, so I was being ambitious when I said I was gonna do all those things I said I was gonna do today. That's all I can fit in today. Although, we should, just for good measure, let's plug those fog lights in and make sure they're gonna work. <laughs> All right, so as you can see, we wired those in without using this hideous thing. I've used these in the past, and I probably will continue to use them here and there, but I avoided using this. So buy yourself a variety pack of these fuse things. Now, the one that should have worked in this fuse box did not work in this fuse box. I had to use one like this because the way it was, the fuse was back in that, so the one that was made for it, which was this one, would not, it was hitting the body and it wasn't letting it go back in the whole way, so it just kept falling out. So these are about the same distance apart, it's just they are longer. Now let me, here you go. So you can actually get away with using that. I had to use different style fuses to put in it, I actually had a, a pack of those too. So uh, it worked out. It's nice having like a couple things here and there. I might actually get some more of these because I do use these on the regular when wiring stuff up. I would, uh, I'd advise using these things because they have their own fuse in it. So I added, a, that was a 20, 20 amp fuse. It was for the cigarette outlet. That was the one I used, it's key on power. Um, so put it in there with the 20 amp, and then I put a 15 amp in it, which is what runs to the wires here. So it will blow before the cigarette outlet one will blow. You get what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying when I'm talking about blowing stuff? I'm done. But yeah, that uh, that's why I did that. Now I'm not real, good when it comes to electrical like i'm not like, i don't understand my amps and wattages and stuff like that like i should like a lot of people do and that's why i have problems when it comes to electrical work too because like i can measure for 12 volts and stuff i'm just not just not good at reading uh wiring diagrams and stuff i try i try but anyways that's gonna be all for this episode if you like this video smash that like button consider subscribing Hit that dislike button if your mom wants me to check out her diagram We'll see you on the next episode of Unwrapped. Do me. Yes, yeah, sir. Come here. Did you think you missed something? You watching for mommy? Did she go up to the gym? Hmm. Do you stick your head up in the curtain? What are you doing? Why's your tail flickering? Come here, Stella. Come here. Come here, Stella. Stewie said, no. I'm going to come get the pets. Stella, what are you doing over there? You going to come see me? Come here. Come say bye to the people. Come on. Why are you so stuck up? Even the Maine Coons come see me. Huh. Say bye-bye.